Hello community! Today it is about the diffusion model and a specific a latent diffusion model for our text to image models that you might already know. As you remember I have already shown you a short video on hugging face where we have the spaces and the model was called diffuse the rest where you provide a picture on the left and you ask the diffusion model with some textual input to create a brand new synthetic picture. Now, how does this model work? And we all start, as you know, with physics. And in 2015, there was a beautiful um, archive preprint by Sol Dickstein, Deep Unsupervised Learning Using Non-Equilibrium Thermodynamics. And you know, well, physics is the mother of all innovation and generates even today new ideas in artificial intelligence. But what was the main part in this research paper? Now the essential idea inspired by non-equilibrium statistical physics was to systematically and slowly destroy a structure in a data distribution through an iterative process they called forward diffusion. And then, when they have done this, the task was to learn a reverse diffusion process that again restores the structure in the data, yielding a high, flexible, and tractable generative model of the data. So, at first you destroy it, then you reconstruct it, and you know this is typical for our autoencoder application. And have a general picture. Now we are here in the blue field where we have given our text to image AI tools. We are now coping with diffusion models and the process how to code the inside of diffusion model from physics into our AI system. Our aim is the latent diffusion model LDM in summer 2022 to understand the basic principle how does model work what component they need and how we have to put them together. But first is first we are in 2015 about deep unsupervised learning using non-equilibrium thermodynamics and you know their Markov chain was one of the dominant physical insights. Now the auto specify our method uses a Markov chain to gradually convert one distribution probability distribution into another an idea used non-equilibrium statistical physics. We built now a generative Markov chain, which converts a simple known distribution, could be a Gaussian distribution, into a specific target data distribution using the diffusion process. Now they explicitly defined the probabilistic model as the end point of those Markov chains. And since each step in the diffusion chain has an analytically evaluable probability, the full chain can also be analytically evaluated. And this is a beautiful property if you have an analytically complete system. Now, essential points are, and this you can see here on the right hand side, that learning in this framework involves estimating small perturbation to a diffusion process. Now, again, this is the trick we have in physics. If you cannot solve it completely, you start with small perturbation, this dynamical system evolves, and if you're familiar with Monte Carlo simulation, this is one or was one of the main processes how to come closer to Mother Nature. Now, estimating small perturbation is more tractable than explicitly describing the full distribution with a single non-analytically normalizable potential function. And since a diffusion process exists for any smooth target distribution, and this is important, any smooth target distribution, this method can capture data distribution from any arbitrary form. So we can use it as a general generative model. Beautiful. Now, if you think that Markov chain are simple, and I have seen some other videos where they say, yeah, this, this is just, you know, you have a dot here and then you add noise and then something happens. Well, if you, or theoretical physicists or mathematics, uh, you understand this. the mathematics behind this coding is not trivial. 
So here we have just a very short uh, model probability and the training algorithms. And as you can see, if you want to have a deep dive, you need a day for this paper. But another very important component to have an understanding of our current model is UNAT. Now, what is UNAT and where does it come from? First documentation here I show you in 2015. Oh yeah, a very fruitful year. We have UNAT, a convolutional network for biomedical image segmentation. So what it was, you had just a, not a lot of training data in biomedical image segmentation for microscopic data, and you have to find uh, a way to get the most out of the training data that you have. So the aim was to use a strong data augmentation to use all available annotated samples more efficiently and also work with very few training images, but those few images should yield more precise segmentation. And as you see, the segmentation of pictures was the crucial point here. And I have here from the original paper, a research paper here, figure four, just to show you, they wanted to identify the cell and find the cell in their pictures. You can see here the cell tracking exactly with UNAT and it was proved successful in 2015 with this UNAT construct. Of course, you have here the link to the original paper. Now, here is a very short view why the model is called UNAT. And this is again for the original publication and you have a contracting path and then you have an expansive path. And I've written here on the right-hand side the characteristic, the architecture characteristic, if you want to code it, what it consists of. Now, the contracting part consists of the repeated application of two 3 times 3 convolutions, each followed by a ReLU, and then a 2 times 2 max pooling operation with a stride of 2 for the downsampling. And each downsampling down step, we double the number of feature channels. And then we go to the expansive path, and it consists of an upsampling of the feature map, followed by two times two convolutions called an up convolution, that halves the number of feature channels, a concatenation with the corresponding cropped feature map from the contracting path, and two three times three convolution, each again followed by a ReLU layer. And at the final layer, we have a one time one convolution, and this is used to map each 64 component feature vector to the class that we are interested in. As you can see, you can have a deep dive for hours and hours in this paper if you really want to understand this model, but I just want to show you the building blocks that you need to understand and you choose where to deep dive into. When we have this model, we can now jump to April 2022. And now we have here the research paper, high resolution, image synthesis with latent diffusion models, LDM. Now LDM was a real hit here in the summer of 2022, but let's have a look at the two main points, how they construct these LDM models. Now, enabling a diffusion model training on a limited computational resources while retaining the quality and the flexibility, they applied the algorithm and the latent space of powerful pretend autoencoders. And there you have it again. You see, if your input space is too complex, too high dimensional, if your hardware compute resources are not sufficient to calculate or find a solution converge in a reasonable time, you have to make estimations. You have to simplify your model, your approach. And they did this, they changed the space they operate in. So they moved from the input space to the lower dimensional latent space of our typical autoencoder. So interesting move, but you see it history repeats itself. They use ideas and models that have been applied before them to different spaces with different algorithms, but this shows you beautifully how modular today the approaches are to construct, for example, text to image AI tools. And then of course they introduce cross-attention layers into the model. 
and they turn diffusion models into powerful, flexible generators for general conditional inputs such as text or bounding boxes and high resolution synthesis becomes possible in a convolutional manner. Well, what does it mean? Here we have a schematic representation of their model, the latent diffusion model. And you see now that you encounter a lot of familiar models for my last four or five videos that I had on auto encoding. We have on the left side our pixel space, our input space. On the right side, if you want, we, we have an autoencoder structure, a very general autoencoder structure, and we have a latent space. Now, as you can see, within the latent space, now we apply the diffusion process, the classical Markov chain based diffusion process. And then we go back and we use now our Z vector in the uh, latent space and we start with our cross attention mechanism, but the main backbone is here a time conditional unit. So you see, autoencoding, latent space, diffusion process implementation, the unit that I showed you in this video, if you have not been familiar before with unit. And then we have a denoising step, we have our cross attention, of course, in the different layers. And you will be surprised, they also in order to try to avoid arbitrarily high variance in the latent space, they have two kinds of regulations, of regularizing operators. And the first, you are not going to believe this, is our KLD, that was so prominent in the last two videos. And the other one they tried was a vector quantized regulation. And this was part of my last video. So you see, all the development since 2015 resulted in one of those models in 2022. And you have to know a little bit about the building blocks that were developed, designed, invented in the years before. Because you can see here a beautiful combination of all the different ideas of the years before. And this really reaches a complexity that is amazing. And don't be fooled by the simple visualization, because if you go in the code structure, you need days, if not a week, to work through the different layers of code. But this is not the purpose of the video. I just wanted to show you, to give you a general understanding of up-to-date state-of-the-art text-to-image um, AI tools, like here in the latent diffusion model. And if we now have a summary view, if you want, on all the different videos here, you have the five videos I recommend to you. If you're new to this topic, at first on the left top side, we start with autoencoder. Then we go autoencoder denoising mechanisms. Then there was this video on how to code variational autoencoder in Python in a Colab notebook I provided to you. Then we jumped to advanced vector quantized variational autoencoder, where we quantize our available space in what we called a code book. And then the final step of the evolution now in 2022 are the latent diffusion model. And I'm sure we are not at the end of the evolution here. Maybe in some month, some team has some new idea, will experiment with the term that I just showed you with the code design or a different complexity adjusted in another way and gain a better performance than with our current models. This was it for this video. I say thank you and I hope to see you in the next video.